Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us here for Health Professional Radio. We're joined by Mr. David Berman. He's going to talk about some survival data from the ChemTrack Phase 3 trial that was presented at the European Society of Medical Oncology 2023. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, David Berman. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you for inviting me. Tell us a bit about yourself, a little bit of your uh, professional and personal background. Yeah, so I'm a physician scientist, and about um, 20 years ago, I decided to move from academia to industry, and I joined right at the time that immunotherapy was starting to take root for treating cancer. And so I got involved in the first immunotherapy checkpoint called uh, Urovoy that was approved in melanoma. And over the past 20 years, I've spent my career in the industry working on immunotherapies for cancer, most recently for the last five years at this company called Immunocore. Now, I mentioned that uh, we were going to talk about some data from the ChemTrack trial. Explain what this data from this trial means for a certain condition, I believe, uh, cancer of the eye. So there are different types of melanoma, and the type that you and your listeners are most knowledgeable about are the type that of melanoma that begins on the skin and then metastasizes. There's a different type of melanoma. It's rarer, but it can begin in the back of the eye. And then when it metastasizes, historically, it uh, goes to the liver, but historically, there's been no therapy that has been shown to prolong survival. And our therapy, ChemTrack, became the first medicine demonstrated to prolong a patient's survival once they've developed metastatic uveal melanoma, which is the name of this subtype of melanoma. What is the the survival length after diagnosis? So once it's diagnosed, you can actually live for quite some time. It's once it becomes metastatic that the clock historically has started ticking. And historically, the average survival for a patient once they become metastatic was about 12 months, so very poor survival. And what our um, medicine ChemTrack did is prolong that survival to over uh, to about 21 months, mm-hmm. almost a 50 percent um, increase mm-hmm. in survival. Is this uh, a very rare form of melanoma? Um, how prevalent is it? It is um, one of the rare forms of melanoma, and in the U.S., um, there's about four to five hundred patients a year diagnosed with metastatic uveal melanoma who have the genetic subtype that the uh, medicine is approved for. Overall, it's about, um, of all eye cancers, it's about 3 three to 5% of all eye cancers are melanoma. So it is a pretty rare subtype of cancer. How was it set up? Yeah, so it was an interesting design because as all medicines for treating cancer, you have to do a randomized trial. And so the trial randomized patients who were newly diagnosed metastatic uveal melanoma, which is this uh, subtype of melanoma from the eye, and it randomized them in a two-to-one fashion. So for every two patients that got randomized to ChemTrack, one patient got randomized to investigator choice. And we chose um, the control arm to be investigator choice because there's nothing really available that is widely appro- that's approved. And so we let the investigators choose what they wanted to do in the control arm. And the primary endpoint of the phase three trial was survival, which is the, you know, the, the hard endpoint that patients and doctors and regulators are interested in. So that was the trial design. And the, at the first interim pre-planned analysis, the survival was uh, positive with a almost 49% improvement in survival. Talk about TCR-specific therapies. Explain to our listeners what those are and how important they are. Yeah, there's two arms to the uh, adaptive immune system. There's B cells and T cells. You're probably familiar with them because of uh, COVID recently. Uh, B cells produce monoclonal antibodies, which obviously have had tremendous success in treating different diseases, and there are many approved. But antibodies can only access proteins on the outside of the cell. The T cells have a T cell receptor, and this T cell receptor can essentially look inside the cell and identify proteins inside the cell. And most of the proteins specific for cancer are found inside the cell. So T cell receptor therapies like ChemTrack have a unique advantage for treating solid cancers. And ChemTrack, the reason we were so excited, Neil, is that ChemTrack became the first ever engineered T cell receptor that's ever been approved for any disease. We are developing it, um, by the way, to treat other cancers besides melanoma, and we have several programs in lung and ovarian and endometrial. 
and, and uh, gastrointestinal, but we have adapted it also to treat chronic viral diseases like HIV and hepatitis B virus. And so we have programs going on. So essentially looking inside the cell to identify cells infected with HIV and HPV. And we've also adapted it um, for autoimmune diseases, and we're trying to develop it also for autoimmune diseases. So we do believe it can have broad application eventually. Are there simultaneous trials taking place? Yeah. So for Kimtrek, we are currently studying it also in metastatic cutaneous melanoma, which is the common type that begins on the skin and becomes metastatic. So that's a trial we're studying Kimtrek. We're also studying it in patients who are newly diagnosed with with the melanoma inside the eye, so the uveal melanoma is inside the eye, they have treatment, local treatment, and then they historically go to watch and wait, and um, there's, there's no therapy uh, before it becomes metastatic. And so we're testing it in that watch and wait period. That's a trial to see if we can prevent it from even becoming metastatic. And then we have another program uh, targeting a different type of protein called PRAIM, which is ongoing in phase one and two, where we're studying it for other types of cancers as well. Is there anything that you'd like to add for our listeners and then give us a website where we can learn more? So um, the initial data from Kimtrak was uh, presented two years ago, which showed this really exciting survival benefit. But one of the questions that has remained is how long would that benefit remain as we followed those initial phase three patients up longer? And what was really exciting for us at the recent ESMO a few months ago we presented three-year survival data that showed that at three years, 27% of the patients randomized to Chemtrack were estimated to be alive compared to 18% who were, rest- who were randomized to the control arm. Yeah. So we do believe there is the potential for long-term survival benefit, which is really exciting for us and, of course, for patients as well. And for those interested in learning more, you can access our website at www.immunocore.com. David, thank you so much. Hopefully you'll come back and give us some updates. Thank you very much for inviting me, and I enjoyed the discussion. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with David Berman. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.